What's a non-sexual thing that you find super hot? A really genuine smile and interest in a conversation, even if the conversation doesn't even include me. I get really turned on when I see a guy genuinely interested in the person he is talking to. I don't know why. I guess I like respectful, kind people. <laughs> Trying to communicate with me. To preface this, I won't be the guy who falls for a bartender while on vacation. I know they flirt with patrons to get better tips. But I think I understand it a bit better now. I spent a week in Mexico and went to one bar regularly with a cute bartender who didn't speak a lick of English, about as much Spanish as I speak. When she wasn't helping customers she always came back to talk to me and I don't think I've ever had someone make such an effort to just talk to me in my entire life. Talking in broken sentences, showing off pictures on our phones, Grabbing the odd word off Google Translate, I could tell you half this girl's life and neither of us can string together five words in a grammatically correct sentence in the other's language. It made me feel so worth someone's time. If someone at home made that much effort I'd probably fall head over heels for them. Edit, a I'd slight edit because in my mind the first part of my statement kind of said I know she wasn't into me and I'm not sitting here pining over her but the number of comments I'm getting where people feel the need to tell me she wasn't into me suggests I worded that poorly. So, here goes. She wasn't into me. She had a boyfriend. She was being nice to someone who was being nice back. And taking an interest in someone taking an interest back. Was she she trying to take advantage of a tourist for money? Could have been. Then again she turned down tips multiple times. At the end of the day, though, I still found the sheer amount of effort she put into communicating with me hot in a non-sexual way, and thus it is my answer to the question. And to clarify my statement at the end if I thought someone was into me, and they were expending as much time and energy just to talk to and spend time with me, I would pretty definitely be into them. The other day at the dinner table all three kids were losing their shit over various nonsense. We couldn't calm any of them because you could barely hear yourself think, and my usually rather quiet wife who avoids conflict and who I have maybe heard raise her voice on only one or two occasions roared enough for a few seconds after you could hear a pin drop. It was so sexy. I learned quite recently that women find hands hot. Suddenly so many episodes of women measuring their hands against mine when I was a teen, early 20s make sense and all those wasted opportunities have passed me by. But here I am now in my 30s flexing my hands around like they're nice cleavage or something. It seems to be the more uh, vascular, the better. I mean, whatever floats your boat ladies. Ed, uh, maybe I should start an only hands. I did a how-to project in high school once and mine was how to read guitar tablature. I brought in a guitar and demonstrated a few things and after played a short song to tie it all together. Afterwards one of the girls in my class was enraptured by my hands and told me she enjoyed watching them. I did not do the math on that one. Yo I had one of those moments. A very cute girl asked me about my tattoo. I have an ink on my forearm and she had one on the back of her neck. She was touching my arm and tracing the ink and talking about how much she liked the symbol. At the time I was like this girl really likes anks, that's cool. Then years later I was sitting down drinking coffee and I reached for my cup and saw my tattoo and bam. Out of nowhere it hit me that maybe she wasn't just interested in my tattoo. I had a moment then continued drinking my coffee. There are certain gestures and other things that people do with their hands that is, for some odd reason, really attractive to me. Like a relaxed hand position where the fingers are all slightly offset in a way that's just so. Or the way someone holds their cigarette. The way they button their shirt or just cufflinks. The way someone might put just a touch of flair in the movement of their hands and fingers while doing a task that they're an expert at. Like when a pianist is really going wild or a craftsman expertly handles the tools of their trade. As an amateur cartoonist who has kind of a thing for hands, you'd think I'd thoroughly enjoy drawing them, 
But, I don't have to write the rest of my rant, because every single fellow artist who reads this is already finishing this rant in their heads. A specific perfume that my soul wears. I just don't understand why but it really really hits me differently. And I've told her as much so she went and limited her usage of it. Will put it on only during special occasions like a date or if she's planning to drag me to the bed hopefully now because um. Whenever she has it on I swear I've never wanted to have her sit on my face more than at that moment. I'm very sensitive to it and can pick it up if she's applied even a small amount to her wrists. So she'll just leave me to react to it when she walks by knowing full well what she is doing. Edit, it's very sexy by Victoria's Secret. The last time she tried to purchase a bottle. She told me they changed it to a lotion so I'm not sure it's still available as a perfume. Regardless, it still has the desired effect on me all the same. This is of course a very me thing so why MMV? <coughs> Smells are a big thing for me, not in a sexual way either. They can put me in a very good place or a very bad place. For instance, in Iraq, especially where I was at, they burned trash all the damn time and I had quite a few bad experiences over there. Anytime I smell burning trash, live in an area with a lot of homelessness, I am transported to that place and time. Same with the smell of sand, dirt and the wind, feel and taste of its grit in my mouth. Just not good and could potentially lead to other bullshit. My wife wears certain perfumes, body sprays that make me feel safe and warm. She had this one sweater that had a very unique feel to it. Ultra soft. She loved it. She cut it up for me into little squares and sparks her perfumes. Body sprays on them and gives them to me whenever I am going somewhere with or without her. The feel of the fabric and its smell can pull me right out of whatever I am experiencing. Most of the time anyway. My oldest daughter has similar body sprays and perfumes. Anytime I smell hers, I feel safe once again. She would always spray herself down with it in my car before going into school and before I would take her shopping. Always just before we get out. I never dot 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 never made it her responsibility to recognize whenever I am having an episode. But she picked up on it. Whenever she does see something is off, she will randomly spray the room I am in. It just makes me feel safe, funnily enough. I guess she has latched onto the same sort of feeling. She mimics a lot of the things I do because she enjoys the smells. We go and sense shopping together lol. Reminds me of something that happened with my friend. He used to like the smell of the specific perfume. I think it was a Chanel. A lot. So he got it for his wife to wear and it really did the trick for him. Apparently the wife didn't think too much of it and lent it to her mother for a bit because she liked it too. My friend had the worster and most awkward boner of his life when he went in to hug his mother-in-law at an event and smelled the horny perfume that he'd gotten specifically for his wife. If your partner gets you a perfume, for the love of God never let anyone else borrow it. Even if they ask what perfume you're wearing, don't tell them because you don't want your partner to have that experience. My husband usually wears a specific deodorant. One day, he put on a different one he had never wore around me before. My brain went through a bunch of different emotions when I noticed because he smelled just like my late father. What a weird experience. He obviously never wore this again but let me have it to smell occasionally when I miss my dad. I'm the same way with my husband's cologne. It's something by Gucci. So not necessarily a rare scent, but it smells so good on him. Sometimes if I'm in a bad place mentally, like after my mother died, he'll spray it on a fuzzy blanket and wrap me up in it. If I could bottle heaven, I'm sure it would smell like him wearing this cologne. You like Huey Lewis and the news? Their early work was a little too new way for my taste. But when sports came out in 83, I think they really came into their own commercially and artistically. The whole album has a clear, crisp sound, and a new sheen of consummate professionalism that really gives the songs a big boost. He's been compared to Elvis Costello, 
but I think Huey has a far more bitter, cynical sense of humor. In 87, Huey released this, for, their most accomplished album. I think their undisputed masterpiece is hip to be square. A song so catchy, most people probably don't listen to the lyrics, but they should, because it's not just about the pleasures of conformity and the importance of trends. It's also a personal statement about the band itself. I was just on a date yesterday, for context, I'm a straight male. Things were going okay, but I was getting a platonic vibe from her for a bit. Then I made her laugh a few times and her entire vibe changed. She slowly moved closer, started touching my arm, etc. Definitely got a feeling that she was suddenly attracted to me just because I made her laugh. Instant attractions is my the best dates I've been on I was kind of in a fuck it what's the worst that can happen moods and asked people out who didn't strike me as my type. One face expressions and conversation literally doubled their attractiveness. Another was robotic as hell and messaging and but in person was a completely different person. Albeit so unfunny it became funny. To me too many people think a date should hit every box straight away or it's no second date. Unless it's obvious no give a few dates a go and see how things evolve. <laughs> Guys who are shy. I quite but shy ones are always really nice and some of them are super hot. Don't get me wrong there's some shy guys who do look a bit not nice but some shy dudes are really hot and when you speak to them they get really flustered and blush. That's how me and my boyfriend met. He was sitting alone in class and I had nowhere to sit so I sat too next to him. A few minutes and I asked him how his day was and he got really flustered and was speaking nervously. Eventually me and him became friends then we got together and life's been great since. In the past, I have made no secret of my disdain for Chef Gusta's famous motto, anyone can cook, but I realize, only now do I truly understand what he meant. Not everyone can become a great artist, but a great artist can come from anywhere. It is difficult to imagine more humble origins than those of the genius now cooking at Gusta's, who is, in this critic's opinion, nothing less than the finest chef in France. In many ways, the work of a critic is easy. We risk very little, yet enjoy a position over those who offer up their work and their selves to our judgment. We thrive on negative criticism, which is fun to write and to read, but the bitter truth we critics must face is that, in the grand scheme of things, the average piece of junk is probably more meaningful than our criticism designating itself. But there are times when a critic truly risks something, and that is in the discovery and defense of the new. The world is often unkind to new talent, new creations. The new needs friends. Last night, I experienced something new, an extraordinary meal from a singularly unexpected source. To say that both the meal and its maker have challenged my preconceptions about fine cooking is a gross understatement. They have rocked me to my core. When a guy puts his hand on the car's headrest when he's looking to back out, rolling up their sleeves on a button-down shirt or putting on cuff links, being thoughtful and doing things without having to be asked, tying a tie, pulling a belt from the pants belt loops, seeing a guy getting along with and playing with kids. When someone starts rambling about something they're super interested in, my boyfriend is a total physics and chemistry nerd. But I'm a lot more art focused, even though I don't understand most of what he says, I love hearing the passion in his voice, he feels the same about me. I love marine biology and animals in general, and sometimes I can spend 30 minutes to an hour just bombarding him with animal facts at teaching him about them. Just the other day, we spent a good hour messaging back and forth while I told him all about sharks. Like how different species hunt their prey, their individual adaptations, etc. It's a lot of fun dating a nerd lol. You know when you leave a party with your soul? Like that moment after everyone has been drunk and loud for a while. And you didn't really want to be there in the first place but going out with your soul's friends is what you do. And it's been hours of pretending to be super into it. 
and you've been having fun but it's also exhausting, that moment where the two of you just get to leave together and breathe a sigh of relief and fall back into being entirely yourselves and just relax, that moment is super hot for me, I wonder if there's a word for it. One time my girlfriend and I were drunk on a nature walk. We were walking on a wooden boardwalk type thing because we were at a wetlands area looking for alligators. She had to pee, but because we were stuck on this wooden walkway thing you couldn't go off the trail behind a tree or anything. Also there were snakes and alligators and stuff. So we had to wait until there were no people around and then she pulled her pants down, squatted down, and pee through the wooden slats while I kept watch. I don't have a piss fetish or anything at all, but something about seeing this beautiful lovely lady squat down and piss like an animal really made me horny for some reason. I can't explain it but it got me going. I told her and she got a good laugh out of it and seemed to appreciate it. Probably should have a PSA warning in here for any curious R. Nice guys. These specific things are likely not the one and only thing that made someone fall for the other. A girl finding it sexy when her boyfriend sings probably doesn't mean he just sang to her and she fell in love. A girl finding kind gestures from her so out of the blue to be sexy doesn't mean you can just perform some nice gesture for a stranger and she's going to sleep with you. Girls thinking a guy's hands are hot playing guitar doesn't mean you can just bust out a guitar and expect to get laid. I think it's unbelievably sexy when a guy takes care of me in literally any way. This guy I was seeing for a while, when we'd go out to lunch would always be so attentive to my needs, asking the waiter to get me napkins if I needed them, etc. Little things that are surprisingly rare. Being considerate and attentive in general, even to others is so hot. When my husband gets excited about something, not sexually excited, but like if he's going through his Pokemon cards or old toys or when he started getting into Lord of the Rings and Batman, it was super super sexy to me. He was bullied by his family for his interests, still is, and it took him a long long time to open up and explore old and new hobbies. And I love the light in his eyes he gets now that he doesn't feel like he has to hide things he likes. Self-awareness, having the ability to observe details about their actions and that of others, while being intelligent and kind about it, it stems as the opposite of one of my turn-offs which is being oblivious and unaware of anything that's happening around them. I love anyone that can be aware of themselves, laugh at themselves and know when things need to be serious or when we can use comedy to cope. I want to feel relaxed and comfortable around them, knowing we're on the same page or have the maturity to get back onto the same page if we fall off. I like people who can see through bullshit, and like understanding how the world works, how reality works, not in some pseudo-depth kind of way just on a simple day-to-day -day life level. To me it shows you're paying attention to your life and your surroundings, you're in the moment, and are observing everything with interest, it's something my brain has done from birth, it's how I operate, so seeing it in someone else just becomes really attractive for some reason, I guess it makes me feel like they would be more capable of understanding my mind, and I theirs. When you go for a haircut and they put your head in the little sink, the girl comes over and rubs your scalp and does the whole shampoo thing. Look, I know she's not interested in me and I know it's not sexual but the fact of the matter is that a pretty young girl who smells great has her breasts a few cm from your face and is giving you the best massage you've had in ages. I'm sorry, but that's sexy as hell even though there's absolutely nothing sexual happening and nobody has any intentions of inappropriate activities. I get really turned on when I see my husband working out or working hard physically on something. I don't remember ever getting like this with any of my exes or any other guys so I think it's always been reserved to him but we met at work and I still remember him carrying supplies to build something. We weren't dating at the time, 
I actually had a BF at the time and I still drooled a little when I saw it, lol. The other thing is when he gives me a really loving look, or like a look that he clearly thinks I'm being adorable in that moment, it just gets me all kinds of ready to pounce on him, lol. Oh, and also love my hubby and new clothing, particularly things that cover him up a lot. I only imagine taking them off.